Here, this is Chris. It's just a few days before Halloween, and I'm leaving the post office. But I was thinking, I see Sinister Street Suites across the street, which is a big horror house here in Griffin. But you know, Griffin's an old town, and I'm sure there's a lot of lies been lived here. And I figured there had to be some ghost stories around. So I've been checking on it a little bit. And I'm going to investigate a couple of them. And tell you about them. But there's not as many as you might think. And most of them surround a couple different locations. I tried to locate where most of them were. Some was very uh, generic as far as the locations go. They said stuff like the south side of Griffin, or I could see the hospital, or they said something like West Poplar Street. So they wasn't specific enough so I could actually locate them. But a couple of them are. And so in the next few minutes, well, quick as I can. We're gonna take a look at those I could locate. In the meantime, enjoy this little drive through Griffin. I've been to the post office. I'm about to head back to the uh, to the house. But I thought y'all'd like a little tour of downtown Griffin, so I'm riding through here. I mean, you'd think there'd be some scary stories over some of these buildings in here, but I just couldn't find any. If you know of any good horror stories from Griffin, how about leaving them in the content, I'm in the content, the comment section below. I'd love to hear them. Alright, appreciate you watching. Hope you enjoy what you're going to be seeing here soon. Don't forget to tell me your horror stories. I really want to hear them. But for now, I'm headed back home. Alright. Uh, but keep watching. I'm going to be explaining a couple of these ghost stories here in a minute. Okay, this is Chris. I'm still headed back towards my place. But there's one that's right here convenient that I can go ahead and check out. Now, where I'm headed to is a corner of Solomon Street and 13th Street. The story is there's a two-story house here with a, uh, which when it was vacant without utilities, um, every now and then they'd see a lighted window with a child in it. Okay, I believe it's uh, be the northwest corner there. It's a two-story house. I'm having to turn around to get to it. So you can see it good. There is a house across the street with rooms up in the attic and windows, but this sounds more like it. I'm going to pull down the camera and point it over there so you can see. Okay, now could this be a true story? Well, let's see now. The house is, excuse me, the house is there. It looks pretty spooky in itself. Now this house in the opposite corner, which is now the De Deja Vu Salon, is also plausible. I'll show it to you now too, pull down my camera. It has a window upstairs. Either one of these could have been vacant at some point without utilities on. 
And so it's plausible that a little girl could have appeared in a window, in a lighted window, with no utilities. So it's up to you. Do you want to believe that? I don't know. It's plausible, but unlikely, other than the fact that the story's been repeated by multiple witnesses at different times during the house's history. That's the only thing that makes it plausible, is that multiple people have said that they witnessed that little girl in that lighted window when the utilities were off at different times. And so, would you have multiple people telling the same lie? That's what, that's what makes it so plausible. But then again, a lot of people said they've seen UFOs too. So, I don't know. All right, we'll check out the other one here in a little bit. Okay, I'm pulling into Griffin High now. Now, there's been a few little stories about this place. Here's the background to them. That back in when this building, I don't know what year they built this place, but back when they built this place, um, they was pouring the concrete for the floors and two of the workers got in an argument and uh, one of them pushed the other one into the concrete um, apparently somewhere under the 400 hallway wherever that is and um uh, and nobody else was there to rescue them. And the guy's still buried underneath that hallway. And since that time, there's been several sightings in the school. There's missing locker doors that have um, been flipping around by themselves. There's been... Uh, shadowy figures moving around in locked rooms. There's been puddle of bl blood just suddenly appearing. And um, in a room on Hallway 400. And you know, there's been several sightings. But what makes this story less believable to me is that if you're pouring a concrete for building this big, there's a lot more than two workers on the job site so it seems to me that if some guy fell into the concrete and was disappearing under the concrete for the floor that they'd find him that somebody rescue him the other deal is that the floor on these type buildings ain't by four inches thick so how in the world could you disappear under it and drown and so that just don't make any sense at all. Um, I see, even though there's been multiple reports of stuff happening here, uh, I truly discount it. You know, I, I say no, I don't believe anything's happened. It might just be some kids might believe something happened, it might be their imagination. Or it could be folks just lying, trying to scare other kids. And so, uh, uh, anyhow, I'm now leaving Griffin High School. That's the whole story behind this place being haunted. And now we're going to go see if we can find us an old funeral home. It used to be an old Confederate hospital. Okay, just hang on for a few minutes. But I think the Griffin High School thing's been busted. Okay. Okay. Where we're headed to now is what I'm told used to be an old Confederate hospital and it used to be a funeral home. 
and uh, right now let's see what it is it's the Bailey family house I think it was built in 1859 it's a nice looking place as you can see let me straighten up my camera a little bit it's a really nice looking place and but there's a lot of stories associated with this place uh, they go from everything from uh, seeing lights on, seeing people in the windows with well, one of those utilities to the building. Uh, there's at one time it was vacant, some kids got in here and they saw blood on the walls and shadows uh, moving around in some of the rooms and heard some spooky noises. And. Uh, and so there's a good number of reports about that kind of stuff. Well, this is a nice looking place now. The window panes in the windows are some of the original panes I can see with the you know glass runs over time. You can see the shapes and the runs. That might contribute to some of the strange stories what they've seen through the windows. But this is because of the history of the building, being an old Confederate hospital and being a funeral home. The stories are plausible, except for like the one where the kids got in here and saw blood all all over the walls. How come the police didn't check that out? And there wasn't no articles written up on it. So I really don't think there's much to the stories there. You know, wind blowing and all, you can have some curtains uh, blow around and you have some noises through the walls. But I really don't think that house is really haunted. Okay, what do you think? Put your comments in the comment section below. I want to know if you've got some stories I don't know about, I'd like to know too. Okay, all right. In a few minutes, we'll be checking out my last ghost story. And it's probably the biggest one around down here. And we'll talk about that when I get closer to it. All right. Okay, where I'm headed now is to old train trestle on Trestle Road. It's actually a Locust Grove mailing address here. And here we are crossing the creek. And to our right should be the trestle. That sort of uh, growed up right now. You can't see. I've been down here before years ago. I looked at this trestle. Now it's on private property. I don't want to get out and start looking around because I might get shot at. but it's supposed to be over to our right. Okay, I'm gonna shut this off and turn around and get a better look. Okay, I'm coming up on the trestle from the north now. So it should be on my left. Well, it is on my left. I'm taking my camera down, holding out my window. Hopefully, you get a glimpse of it back there in the woods, right back there. I can see it there. Now, I don't know what the story is behind this. I don't know if somebody got killed when they were building it. Or somebody got killed there during the Civil War. I don't know what happened. But the stories go like this. And there's been a lot of stories about it. The stories are that you come down here at night. And you can see somebody, see a lantern going across it. There it is right there. 
look in the center of my picture frame, you'll see the trestle there. It's probably 50 feet above ground at that point. And um, if you come out here at night, you might see somebody walking along the trestle holding a lantern. Or if you shut off your car or sit here, you go to re-crank it, it won't crank for 10 to 15 minutes. Now that's, that's the story, okay? Now, how true they are, I don't know. For me, they sound like stories a high school guy might tell his high school girlfriend when he comes over here parking to get her to snuggle up and get him a little closer. But that, you know, that's my opinion. I really can't see nothing back in there right now. But that's my opinion. I really don't think it's haunted. But it does make a good story to your girlfriend. It's back over here parking. Now, like I said, it's on private property. I understand the guy who actually owns it is a nice guy. I don't mind people going back over and taking a look. But I understand his neighbor ain't the best guy in the world. So be careful if you come over here. All right, that's the last spooky story that I can verify the location of at this point in um, Spalding County. There was several more, more stories, but none of them I could figure out where they were. You know, they might tell me a particular street that was on, but not which house. And so, uh, if you know of any more, give me a shout in the comments below, and I'll do my best to check them out. All right, now.